welcome to our third My CMR webinar on planning and scanning in cardiovascular magnetic resonance. In this lecture, we're going to follow the principles outlined in SCMR endorsed documents on image acquisition as well as interpretation and post processing. We will review the principles of scanning and planning of left and right ventricle, forming the basis for assessment of volumes, function, and structure. This provides an overview of basic cardiac views. These are short axis slices, apical, mid, and basal, as well as long axis views, four chamber view, two chamber view, and three chamber view. They are not only useful in CINA imaging, that is for assessment of LV function, they also provide geometries which are used to plan tissue characterizations such as scar imaging by late gadolinium enhancement. LV module is acquired in three steps. In step one, we obtain scouts and planning views such as vertical and horizontal long axis. In step two, we focus on acquisition of short axis stack. In step three, we acquire true long axis views, that is four, three and two chamber views. Triplane survey serves to identify heart's position in a chest cavity in transverse, coronal, as well as sagittal orientation. We begin with a transverse view in which we see most of the left ventricle, mitral valve and left atrium. We place our first imaging slice in line with the definition of long axis of the left ventricle, which connects apex and middle of the mitral valve, resulting in vertical long axis view. We plan the next count view by slicing vertical long axis longwise, resulting in horizontal long axis view. The scout views vertical long axis and horizontal long axis are important for planning of short axis stack. Short axis stack is planned perpendicular to the long axis of the left ventricle. Therefore, we place a stack of short axis slices perpendicular to the imaginary line in the center of the ventricle. The obvious advantage of such planning strategy is in reducing oblique cuts through the myocardium which can give false impressions of regional wall motion abnormalities. Our next planning step is the definition of the middle slice. For this, we employ the principle of five into three slices. Having defined the angulation of our stack, which is perpendicular to the long axis of the left ventricle in end diastole of horizontal long axis view, we now move to end systole that is part of the heart cycle when the ventricular cavity appears to be the smallest. We size up the cavity of the left ventricle by placing five slices from the base, that is mitral valve plane, to the endocardial border of the apex. Because we've defined the angulation of short axis stack in end diastole, the feet of the very basal slice, the fifth slice, with mitral valve plane may appear less perfect in end systole. Be advised to avoid the temptation of further angulation at this point. Our next step is to remove the two outer slices, the first and the fifth, leaving us with the three slices in the middle, providing the definition of the middle slice, as well as the basis of three short axis slice geometry, that is apical, mid, and basal short axis slice. The important advantage of planning of three slice geometry in end systole as opposed to end diastole is to account for the movement of the base of the septum towards the apex that happens during systole, reducing the chance of cutting into the LVOT in the basal slice, making it non diagnostic for these important segments. Having defined the middle slice of our short axis stack, the next point is to achieve a complete coverage of right and left ventricle, avoiding tight placement of the stacks and loss of information at the apex as well as at the base, leading to the underestimation of right ventricular and left ventricular volumes and LV mass. The middle slice defines the geometry of all short axis stacks acquisitions, not just the CNA imaging, but also edema imaging or late gadolinium enhancement imaging. 
it is defined by the choice of uneven number of slices. Having considered the important points in the acquisition of a short axis stack, such as perpendicular planning to the center line of the LV cavity, definition of the middle slice by 5 into 3 planning and the choice of uneven number of slices, as well as achieving complete coverage of left and right ventricle. This is our short axis stack. Our next planning step are the true cardiac long axis views, that is, four chamber view, two chamber view, and three chamber view. They are true in a sense that they correspond with the correct anatomical landmarks. That is, definition of a long axis, as discussed previously, following the center line of the left ventricle, definition or nomenclature of the wall's segments in short axis, as well as minding the inclusion or exclusion of aortic valve. For chamber view is defined by visualization of four chambers, that is, left atrium, left ventricle, right ventricle, and right atrium. In the first image, mid-short axis lies, we connect right ventricular corner, inferior septum, as well as anterolateral wall. VLA serves for definition of long axis, apex to mid of the mitral valve. And Snowman helps to aim for the interatrial septum, avoiding cutting into the aortic valve. And here comes our four chamber view, allowing visualization of left ventricle, right ventricle, right atrium, as well as left atrium, interventricular septum, as well as interatrial septum, mitral valve, and tricuspid valve. Our next planning step is two chamber view, defined by visualization of the left ventricle, left atrium, as well as mitral valve in the middle. For planning, we again use mid short axis slice, as well as four chamber view that we have just acquired. The planning landmarks include apex to mid of the mitral valve, defining long axis, as well as inferior and anterior wall. And here comes our result, two chamber view, a very important view for appreciation of regional wall motion abnormalities in anterior wall, as well as inferior wall. Our last planning step is three chamber view, defined by visualization of left ventricle, left atrium, as well as aortic valve and ascending aorta, functioning as the third chamber. For planning of three chamber view, we use four chamber view for definition of long axis connecting apex and mid of the mitral valve, as well as the snowman view, this time trying to cut right in the middle of aortic valve. And here comes our three chamber view, allowing visualization of aortic valve and ascending aorta, LVOT, mitral valve, as well as left atrium, left ventricle. An assessment of regional wall motion abnormalities in anterior septum, as well as inferolateral wall. With this we have covered basic cardiac views, which are the prescribed views across various cardiac imaging modalities for assessment of LV function, as well as regional wall motion abnormalities and also adopted in cardiovascular magnetic resonance. Important additional views include those providing a good look of the aortic valve as well as of the right ventricle. Aortic valve views include three-chamber view, LVOT views, as well as on-fast view of the aortic valve. In planning of LVOT view, we start with three-chamber view. We place our imaging slides longwise to the ascending aorta, aiming for the middle of aortic valve. The snowman image can be helpful for us to check that we are cutting right through the middle of aortic valve. And here is our result, the LVOT view, giving a good look of aortic valve, as well as ascending aorta. We place a series of overlapping slices in line with aortic valve plane. And here is our result, aortic valve view, 
allowing appreciation of aortic valve opening as well as its morphology, in this case being bicuspid aortic valve. In clinical routine, a good look of right ventricle usually means transaxial synostac and RVO-TBO, bearing in mind that if any abnormalities are detected, additional views such as RV two-chamber view as well as pulmonary artery views are always possible. When planning transverse or axial synostac, it is important to include important structures such as pulmonary artery as well as the very bottom of the heart. And here is our result, transverse TAC allowing a good appreciation of right ventricle, its continuation into RVOT, pulmonary valve just here, and pulmonary artery and its bifurcation. Planning RVOT is our next step by cutting through the pulmonary valve as well as main pulmonary artery. And here is our result, RVOT, allowing to appreciate pulmonary valve, main pulmonary artery, RVOT, as well as the outlet of right ventricle. Congratulations, you've made it right through the end. In summary, we've looked at the principles of scanning and planning of left ventricular module, as well as a few important additional views. Here comes a list of sources I've used in this presentation for your information. Finally, I would like to thank you for your attention, as well as acknowledge the courtesy of critical review provided by Professors Chris Kramer and Ike Nagel.